and against mech mage it's uh, well it, i think it really i think depends. uh i think mech mage it generally is slightly favored because of the fact that um, they can actually pack more phase damage overall and they can complement their board generally a bit better. The only upside is that Zoo tends to be running a lot of death rattles, which means that um, as a result, Mech Mage, if they don't manage to get good trades and abuse their hero power, um, they're usually in a bit of a, a tough spot. But in general, I say Zoo is not bad. It's just a lot less consistent than it used to be. That Soulfire nerf really hit it hard, denying the ability to get a massive tempo swing. You know, the way that Backstab works for Rogue, um, they don't get that anymore out of an empty hand Soulfire. They've mm -hmm. got to pay mana mm -hmm. for that. And that's, you know, when you're paying minions that cost one and two, you're basically trying to flood the board and so you're saturating your mana every turn just to put stuff on the board and soul fire needs to be used in those circumstances but when it costs one mana it's a bit tougher to to get that edge i think just soul fire can be abused as much uh, as it was for zero mana and we we see that with every single card that ha has like zero mana cost and it, it's getting abused and when it will be Change the one mana as soul fire, then would we'll change the whole class eventually. Like Hunter's yeah. Mark. Imagine Hunter's Mark for one point of mana. It would change the gameplay of. It, it used many to be hunters. one mana, and it was never played. It used to be one mana, and then and they changed it because nobody played it. And the same was Conceal used to be zero mana, and it was broken. Oh, yeah. it, um, it was so beyond it was, broken because yeah. the stealth. The, I think the stealth <laughs> was wasn't permanent and one, zero mana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't for one turn. It was just permanent stealth. Imagine yeah. that. Uh, that and that. Gazetten was for five points of mana then, and well, no one even cared about the Gazetten because the um, um ba, 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 the two one three mana addict. Mana was addict just... was just one shotting everyone. Yeah. yeah, you just play that down, you conceal it, then you just flood the the board with uh, with spells, and you're eventually going to be working this. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, uh, um, yeah it's that, just that, that insane. I... Yeah, I mean, the, the game has changed quite a bit, and I feel like with BRM, we're going to see even more mid-range decks come out as a result of dragons being emphasized. And mech itself, you know, you look at mech mage, you think, that's an aggro deck. Well, yes and no, it's a mid-range deck that is hinging on the aggro side. So if your typical decks are all in the mid-range area, then BRM becomes a way to consolidate that playstyle. Obviously, Face Hunter will always be there to punish the slower decks, but as long as... Uh, mid-range is emphasized, we're going to get interesting games that don't necessarily last until, um, you know, they don't last 35 minutes each. Although I suspect Control Priest might come around after BRM. That'd be nice to see. Mm -hmm. Control, Control Priest. Priest. And uh, what I wanted also to say is, did you think... Uh, sorry for changing the topic go ahead, of the go Priest, ahead. but um, did you think about Emperor being concealed? Yeah, it's nasty. You play that and then you get guaranteed two turns of mana reduction and you mm -hmm. could faceless it if you wanted in some matchups. I don't know if that will bring back faceless because it's it's not necessarily the best um, the best thing to do. But then again, you know, it lowers the cost of your faceless down to four. So you, yeah. you can more easily play, play it on Thorson. So if you get a good stealth on it, it's definitely possible. What I'm worried about is that, well, I'm not worried about it so much as I am uh, predicting or assuming it's going to happen, it's going to be played in pretty much everything that's not a phase deck. Like well, every mid range and control is probably going to be trying to play Emperor, right? Every uh, every deck that abuses the amount of cards they have in their hand. Yeah, that's Handlock could even like it. I, I think though Handlock gets somewhat punished by this because they can die out of nowhere now um, with earlier combos. Like just because Emperor is played, they can answer it, but then. The damage output and the tempo that the opponent gets can be faster than they can answer. Well, uh, Siphon Souls have those. to make a comeback, right? In hand, definitely. Just, be, just because of the Emperor, I think it's a six mana card that will um, just answer the Emperor instantly. So that's something that will make a comeback to the Warlock. And as you said, Priest will be playing with two Shadow War devs. Uh, I assume for the first week, at, at the very least, for the first week, we'll see how the metagame evolves. But with Hungry Dragon and Emperor very being targetable, I feel like that's going to be uh, the direction the metagame is going to be taking. So, on this note, guys, we're ready to start the first match. Show versus Thais. We have Show is going to be playing his Mage, and Thais is going to be playing his Warlock. So, Druid Mage Shaman versus Hunter Warlock Warrior. Little reminder, this is a Conquest format, so whoever wins cannot replay the deck that they won with. Players are ready, so we should be getting to the game very shortly. Warlock versus Mage. This is a Mech Mage. Show is going to be in a little bit of a... Sticky situation, I suspect. It's a bit of a it's a bit problematic when you're playing Mech Mage against Midrange Warlock. True. It might be. Well, it really depends on the draws, as usual. Yeah, it's always a draw dependent thing, but like Midrange Warlock's got what it takes to take on 
Like uh, major's pseudo aggression. It's, it's really interesting that Azure Drake uh, is making comeback to the uh, mages. Like they were replaced by low tips, they were replaced by mm -hmm. sky golems, um, by m way different cards, and now they are seeing comeback, and I'm I'm not sure why. Like I thought that sky golem is is also good. It's not a five drop, of course, but um, it basically draws your card, which is um, played instantly at the board either because of the RNG. And I'm not sure if the spell damage is so important here. What I mean, the, the, I guess the only reason why Azure Drake might be more relevant is because you're getting your the, your game plan, um, because you're digging through your deck is obviously getting furthered. Whereas if you play Pilot of the Sky Golem, you're getting a free board. Um, Would you say you're not... digging through the deck with a deck that only draws out of uh, Azure Drake? Azure Drake, yeah, you, you're getting mm. those fireballs, you're getting those frost bolts, which might end the game faster than the minion that comes out of the golem. Might and you know it's a four health minion. One is on turn five. One is on turn six, and they both represent heavy threats for the opponent, regardless of which one comes down first. Well, yeah, you're right with that. Interesting draws from both players. Yeah, Joe has a really good hand, but on the other uh, on the other side of the game board. On the other hand, <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to avoid using two, twice hand in one <laughs> sentence. Yeah, uh, Hellfire is presenting a very big threat to shows uh, board. Uh, can you imagine when Warlocks are going to be getting Demon Heart to play with? I mean, I can already see Warlocks are all going to be playing that Blood Mage downloads Demon Heart for 5 damage, I mean 4 damage AoE, get a pseudo Flame Strike, or Explosive Sheep Demon Heart for 5 damage AoE, get themselves a really crazy board wipe that doesn't damage their health. Mm -hmm. So Taisa has an option to kill the Divine Shield with the Mortal uh, Coil and then play Hellfire next turn. Yeah, the, okay. like there's a thing to say with this Hellfire is that it gives him good value and he could have play, played for value and waited one more turn, right? But then his health pool would have been at about 14 at this point. Yeah, that's game. not good. You can't. When you don't have more than Vance in, in your hand, you can't really play that. And one thing that is really bad for Ty's with that Hellfire is basically he's saying, I don't have more than Giants in my hand. Yeah. You're so, incentivizing the opponent to just push as much as he wants, and that's a bit of a sticky spot. I guess you have to try to Dark Bomb. Yeah, Dark but... Bomb, and maybe get a one eye Cheat, and then Mortal Coil. That would be the best. I mean, you could get Captain's Parrot, Novice Engineer, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. one eye Cheat, Loot Hoarder. There are a lot of one, like, get two drops that have one health. So you yeah. could try that, or alternatively, you play Hellfire to deny the Goblin Blast Mage, but yeah, if he replenishes, good, then you've got no more AoE. I don't like that very much. What about... Oh, he goes for the Hellfire. Okay. Well, let's see what comes out. It's a Shadow Boxer, another mech, so... Sean's That's gonna, very be pretty unfortunate. Happy. Mm -hmm. he, he saw two Hellfires, so now he will drop the Kogamaster and uh, Yeti. Yeah, this is the point where you just flood the board. I mean, you've seen two Hellfires early in the the game, you have to assume that guy's got no more AoEs. Mm -hmm. And before triple, like double corruption on two minions. That's what I didn't like the second Hellfire. I would rather see the more uh, the Dark Bomb just to I... get, you know, ha have the option of clearing the board again because you don't have a Shadow Flame in your hand. Uh, I agree with you. I would tend to say that that's probably the more uh, long term, you know, game plan. He's mm -hmm. got a good anti kill bot, but he's going to be taking a lot of damage from what's on the board. What about Dark Bomb being the Shadow, uh, shadow Boxer and then using. Oh, well, first, you use both Mortal Coils on the. Cogmaster. On the Cogmaster, you draw one card. And uh, then you. Then you play the Dark Bomb. Yeah, you're, you're, hoping for, you're hoping for Siphon Soul because your following turn is going to be an anti kill no bot. No one's playing Siphon what. Soul nowadays. I know. But you've got to be hoping that you're going to find something. That's a removal follow-up, because this is not sufficient. Maybe well, Ancient Watcher have... with Defender would have been nice. Uh, I, I think... <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. There you go. Uh, yeah. Goblin Blast Mage, has got, has, he's got his work cut out for him. Yeah, he knows what he's got to do. Just ping that uh, heal bot twice. And go full face. Oh man, look at the amount of damage Show's going to be packing here. Tyus has to draw into Molten Giants, and that's not even helping him a lot. So Sho's thinking, what happens if I attack face? You know, the Molten Giant lineups. If I attack yeah. face, you can play Molten and Sun Fury. But I think Thais' lines of play haven't demonstrated that he's got those, uh, those cards. I just wanted to say that Thais is playing like 
he's telegraphing. I have no molten giants. Yeah, I don't. that's what I feel like he's saying. I have no more AOEs. I have no more molten giants. And he would need both molten giant and shadow flame to do something in this game. Subliminal message: Show you, you can go face. Show you can go face. Nope. You know no what goals. I want to see one day in a tournament setting? Somebody drops a Magma Rager on turn 7 with Shadow Flame. <laughs> one day, it will happen. You know what? This will be... Oh, Mountain Giants. This is that a doesn't typical help handlock. All. You got 9, 12, 14, 16 damage on, on board. Yeah, you've got to be uh, fishing for that So what double you got... coil and hope for the best, I guess. And what do you want to draw with that? Uh, nothing. There's nothing. I, I see nothing. Dark Bomb will coil to reduce the damage from the uh, Blast Mage, but still. Get another Dark Bomb. Watcher's Ancient a bit Watcher, too late. Nine, that's, not, that's not enough. There's still 2, 6, 7, 11, Close 12 points of damage. Off, 12, yeah, one off. Oh, oh well, that's mind. good game. Never mind that. Wow, I'm surprised uh, that wasn't mid range Warlock. It was a Handlock, and Handlock's biggest weakness obviously is. If they don't find the taunts early on, you know, Sludge Belcher would have been great here during this game, getting himself a better Hellfire. I feel like those were used very liberally from Vice. Very, very liberally. Uh, well, I didn't first one really I like the second Hellfire. Yeah, first one but, seemed like it was perfect, but the second one felt a yeah. little uh, too quick on the trigger. He had the, he had the bomb. I would really like him to use the bomb, and then afterwards, using the uh, Hellfire would be more beneficial because he still had two Mortal Coils in his hand. So next turn, even even if there would be a Goblin Blast Mage, a Tinker Tower Technician, whatever, you Hellfire and you finish them off with uh, the Mortal Coils. The Mortal Coils, yeah. You try to weaken them and then you get a better way to clear the board. I mean, he had to use a Coin for the first one and then the second one was effectively full mana saturation. So mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. puts him a little... It, it's really hard to weave in those Coils when you don't have the Coin anymore. Well, Show's going to be playing a Shaman next. He's brought Druid Mage and Shaman. The Mage is now uh, one win up, so it won't be reused by Show, but Shaman... It's going to be facing one of the three decks from Thais' lineup, Hunter, Warlock, Warrior. And I feel like it's fine against Lock, it's fine against Warrior, but against Hunter it might have a little bit of a problem. That's true. Well, Warlock is interesting. Thais is going for his Warlock, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking, why would he pick again the Warlock when there's a Druid and a Shaman left? M maybe he's thinking at... Uh, He's so gonna start Shaman? with Druid. Maybe he, he's just trying to mind read and figures his opponent's gonna be playing Druid. But at the same time, well, I mean, Shaman with the, the Earth Shocks against the Drakes, that's a typically good matchup. You've got Hexes for the Giants. Um, so typically, this is not an amazing matchup, but I, I think Warlock has a better matchup here than maybe against the Fast Druid. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, but I think Hunter might have been just the best one, depending on what it is. I mean, it beats. His hunter beats mid-range druid, and it tends to beat shaman, depending on whether or not it's an aggressive hunter or not. Eh, well, you know, we'll have to see. We we can start with the game as soon as possible, and then see uh, see it ourselves. Like, I'm really yeah. interesting. How how will be the shaman build? It, will it be like a classic shaman? Maybe a shaman with a little touch of mechs, or just be full mech shaman? You know. Yeah, I mean, if Mech Shaman comes in, generally speaking, when uh, Hunters are pretty much all over the place, I see a lot of Mech Shaman because they can outrace them if Hunter doesn't start trading. So it does happen quite often, but typically you see more mid-range in tournaments than Mech. Mech was popular for a little while, but it didn't last very long, unfortunately. That's true. That's, a, that's also an interesting thing. Well, okay, let's jump into the game. There's an F Shock. He kept the F Shock. No, he didn't. Wait, what? I hate the spectator mode, you know, with all those bugs. I don't know what's happening in the Morgan phase. Yeah, you don't Did know you if he mulliganed the Earth Shock and yeah. got it back or if he kept it. Well, oh, well, this is probably a mid range shaman. I mean, you see Manatide, you see Dr. Boom, Fire Ellie. I mean, those are pretty sta pretty big staples, but nothing here to indicate that this is a mech. Oh, well, man. Will... I love that uh, Manatide here forced the Dark Bomb, and there is none. A, you can't use Hellfire. That really sucks. Yeah, no mana. And you wouldn't even like to use it here. It feels like trash. You've got one minion. There's a zombie trial, so you can um, tap into zombie trial. 
think that's gonna have to be the play. Otherwise, you know, otherwise you got nothing. You could you could keep the Chow if you want above the Drake, but you know there's Earth Shock, so the the amount of health that the Twilight Drake gets is irrelevant. Well, you have to drop the Drake as soon as possible in this matchup, mm -hmm. because otherwise you would be saying I won't drop it at any time of the game. Yeah, the, the, the more deeper, he draws. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The more he draws, the um, the, the, the better the chances of drawing the Earthshock. Well, well, I wouldn't be surprised to see Sho just play a, a boring totem or a creeper here. I don't. I almost feel like you could be very passive, but you have a, like you can afford to be passive. Sorry, in this position. Oh wow! And he finds the perfect totem. That that defense is manatied perfectly against the current board. But unfortunately for him. There's a dark bomb, but look at that. It's it, Thais is not happy. He's like, you know what? If that had been their last turn, I could play my Drake now, but now I've got to make the choice. Mm -hmm. You have to use the dark bomb. You have to tap into dark bomb. I didn't see yep. another choice. You can't allow um, Show to draw more than two cards from the totem. It's already really disastrous that he did draw two. Oh, wow. So he basically says, I don't care. You have to use one point of mana for the Earthshot now. Next turn, yeah. so you won't be able to drop a four drop, which is basically non-existent at this state of the game because we are not we, we don't have the um, new elemental from BRM yet. Out. Yeah, the Fire Guard Walker. I actually when like next week, I think we're gonna be allowing those cards in the tournament, right? Yeah, we will. That'll so that's hard. gonna be a really cool thing. We're gonna be casting the Kingwin Pro League for you know the entire duration of the release of BRM. So new decks will crop up, hopefully. And uh, that should spice up a little bit of the, the decks that you'll will be see. insane when it comes to va uh, value. <laughs> when it value. comes to uh, when it comes to content, it, it's really insane. So many tournaments, uh, and each Tuesday and Thursday we have Kingwin Pro League, and each week you will see new meta game, kinda. Yeah. Because it, we can predict how much the game will change after each wing, but still, I, I predict it will change a lot. Well, the first wing is going to be at least. It's interesting for priests with re like you know resurrect. The problem is, how impactful is it going to be? First week is it resurrect. You right? sure of that? I'm pretty sure they get that. Pretty sure pre. No, no. First, uh, first week is going to be. Uh, you're right. Warlock and hunter. I think for the. I, I think warrior and. Um, warrior and uh, hunter. So quick oh, shot. I thought I thought it was warlock. All right, so it's going to be quick shot and the you know. And the not interesting warrior card. Yeah, the not interested of revenge. Poor, poor warriors, man. I pity you, warriors. I'm sorry about that. If you like your warrior class, I'm sorry about that revenge. And I, I somebody's gonna quote me on this and show me how wrong I am. You know, two months down the line when it's everywhere and it's like the best warrior card ever printed. But I don't see that. All right, so Vice is trying to put back. Put off, sorry, the offense from Sho, which is gonna get good value out of his flame tongue here. He got double Hellfire, so that's good. And he has Doctor Seven. Well, both players have Doctor Seven. Yep. I feel like Sho's uh, Sho's current position is pretty solid. It's Playing way Fire better. Ellie is uh, a bit awkward because you're trading, in effect, your entire board at this point. Do um, you really care? Do this? I don't no, know. not really. Yeah. The alternative was to play Flame Tongue and Pilot and Shredder, but you're playing into Hellfire. Quite well, substantial. For show sure it's Dr. Seven next turn and Dr. Neptulon turn eight. Dr. Neptulon, holy crap. Yeah. Well, that's a possible BGH play, if you'd rather. I don't mind BGH in this position. I know giants are coming out just about every time, but... Why not uh, just Dr. Boom? Counter Dr. Boom and go face? Mm-hmm. You got so many cards, and there will be still giants there. And uh, Giant is more difficult to remove than Dr. Boom, I think. All right. So what do you do? I guess, what do you do about that? Dr. Well, Boom, you, you can, you can, I would just say Dr. Boom and go face. Okay. I guess you just Dr. Seven. The answer is Dr. Seven is to play Dr. Seven. Did you see the infographic is, should I play Dr. Boom? It's like, do you have seven points of mana? A yes. Flowchart? Yes. You, you should. <laughs> You, yeah, the, the chart. If you have seven points of mana, you play it. If you don't have Doctor Boom, uh, if you don't have seven points of mana, you don't play it. Do you have Doctor Boom in hand? You play it, <laughs> and then you check the mana. Oh, never mind. I never mind. I blew it. Yeah. 
No, it's, it's always you a. Get I get the idea. Yeah, if you can play it, then you're good to go. If yeah. uh, Doctor Boom goes it? green, you've got it forever. Do you have Doctor Boom? And do you have the mana points for that? Oh uh, my! Oh wow! God, that hit on the fire Ellie. That's oh. going to allow the second Boom Bot to trade into the fire elemental and if that's it hits huge. the boom bot and then he can trade his 7-7 seven, seven away that's going to be a complete board denial well oh man odds of, ha of that happening were really low so i thought that the dr boom would be the best bad scenario here and we both see that show agreed with uh, with my train of train of yeah course. the odds of this backfiring the way it did were so slim i don't even think you can afford playing around stuff like this but when it does happen in a tournament setting You've got to feel like the gods are against you. And honestly, if that Ragnaros oh, wow. kills Dr. That's Boom, right. this is going to be devastating. Will it happen, though? That, that's could. really risky. 50-50. No. Well, I mean, you still, you're still fine, right? Uh -oh. I like you, you got a BGH here. You're good to go. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't really like the uh, Ragnaros, you know? I think it's a, I mean, it's, a, it's a way to compound your advantage. And if it does work, then you win the game right away, right? If it works, you win. Shaman can't handle this unless he double hexes, in which case you get the initiative on your giant. So I feel like this the, the gamble um, at this point was worth it, just because of the potential upsides. So uh, how many points of damage can show squeeze next turn? Six, twelve, and if, uh, uh, with Alakir, he can get a lot. Yeah, he can get twelve just off of that. Yeah, and is it lethal? No way. Yeah, no, there's a count. Uh, but so. Alpha. No, but you can't play the rock fighter then. Okay, never mind. Okay, so oh, hex. oh the no, hex top deck. That is a great card draw here for show. I he did get see... his fire elemental squeezed out with a boom bot, so that's gonna be the revenge of the RNG. I don't see the a way out for ties here in this game. To be honest, I don't see. Well, it. your both hellfire are basically dead. Yeah, he had to, like, the fact that a, a Warlock mid-game, when the Shaman's drawn three cards off of Mana Tide and countered your Rag with a BGH, when you're at this point of the game and you're playing a Mountain Giant for six mana, uh, you're playing into Hex and you know it, right? Mm -hmm. But that means you're desperate, generally speaking. That's what that indicates to me. All right, keep the board clean to avoid any Powerful Elming, Shadow Flame shenanigans. Desperate house Warlock. Well, the Desperate House Lock? <laughs> oh yeah, that's way better. <laughs> yeah. The Desperate House Lock, new TV show airing on, what are we, March 3rd, 31st? I'm lost. What is time? Oh, that's game, right? Uh, I guess you play Sylvanas and Defender. I guess you yeah. could potentially, I but no, you're dead because there's an Earth Shock in this case, but... So 12, 16, 20 points of damage is lethal. Yeah, with Earth Shock, it's uh, definitely lethal. So. Show's gonna be going for 2-0 over Thais in this here and in this uh, in this game in this here, ladies and gents. You heard it here first. It, in this here, so Thais, I mean, he's got access to his whole lineup. Um, but I feel like maybe picking Hunter would have been overall marginally more consistent against Show's remaining lineup because now mm -hmm. Show's gonna I, be going on to his Druid. To be honest, I didn't like either the kind of plays that Thais did in the first game and either the choice of the class in the second game. Yeah, I, I think the second Hellfire in the first game was a bit weird. The class picking in second game uh, in the second game was a bit awkward. But ultimately, you know, he knows his decks better than we do. We don't know what's in his decks. We don't yeah, know how. Yeah, and obvi he obviously, we're the better players here. So. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. I mean, we're casting. We see both yeah. hands. We can, and even when we see the hands, we still don't see all the best plays. So, um, <laughs> you know, that that's the fun part about this. You know, you're casting. You're not playing the game. I'm just, uh, I'm just curious to see what he's gonna pick here because against Druid. I mean, he's got Warlock and Warrior. Warlock against Fast Druid is not amazing, but it's got like a 40%. Uh, Warrior's got a pretty tough time of it. And Hunter, if it's mid-range, generally is okay. I'm really curious what Thais is going to opt for. I think you go first for the, hunt, for the Hunter. Try to get, uh, at the very least, the maximum amount of possible tiebreakers. I don't see how Thais... Unless Thais will get really lucky with her draws and show will whip with his opening hands i don't see ties winning this game this well it's possible hard. i mean you, we, we've seen all sorts of uh, reverse sweeps in the event so far so it's not impossible it's just going to be a really uh, uphill battle for him and we're told by the admins that he's going to be going for his warlock again you know what i'm doing right every time we say that a player will lose he wins you know that's right oh i see how it is you're trying to jinx show 
Yeah. I see it. All right, yeah. I'm gonna tell that complexity so they can reverse jinx you. <laughs> They're gonna do some voodoo stuff behind the behind the scenes there. Yeah. So I'm really curious to see uh, how this matchup is gonna go. Generally speaking, Druid tends to have a, a bit of an edge since the double combo has been standardized, but. Um, a good start from a Warlock will take this game really convincingly, very often. Mm -hmm. you know, no Keeper of the Grove on a Drake, and that's pretty much the end of your game as a Druid. Well, you still can combo out of nowhere, so... Right. You, know, you need to find happen. that. I feel like a lot of those games come down to an Ancient of Lore top deck. Um, I've seen so many Warlock versus Druid matches where all it comes... It comes down to the Druid slamming stuff on the board for constant pressure. And then he gets an Ancient of Lore top deck, replenishes his hand and gets the combo, you know, in the first uh, four draws following that. It, th it tends to ha happen very, very frequently. True, true. Okay, we'll be jumping into the game. And um, doesn't look bad for Thais. There's a Mountain Giant. And a National Water, which is also not bad when you draw those activators. He hmm. got the coin though, so that's uh, that's nothing you want to to have as a warlock, I think. You want to well, have the the initiative. Exactly. Well, it's not too bad. I mean, if you're getting yourself a Drake on turn three. Well, you uh, will you coin it out, waste. right? Will you coin it out? Uh, maybe not, since you've got a mountain giant. You want to empty. You want to fill out that hand to get a mountain as fast well, as possible. What you want to. What you want to avoid is. Uh, Druid having six points of mana when you drop the Twilight Drake. Yeah, for the Keeper of the Grove hero power trade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that we'll, we'll see how Thais does it. He's um, obviously the better player here. Oh, show oh, finds wow. a Shade of Axe. That's important. Quite, yeah. And the interesting part about uh, Show's hand is that like, you see the Sand and Shieldmaster here. That's a card that's generally teched in to deal with the yeah, ubiquitous Paladin Shredder. 4-3 for three, four, 4 mana, Senjin is a 3-5 for 4, so it lives. It's kind of got that uh, Blackwing Technician vibe to it. Starting BRM, you should be seeing a lot more of those, and Paladin Shredder might fall out of favor. So he ten. didn't opt for, uh, sorry for interrupting you, but he didn't opt for the Twilight Drake on turn 3. Yeah, you can't coin it out, because you want to play the Mountain. Right? You want to mm -hmm. keep a coin oh, wow. off of the Mountain. Did you see that? Yeah, playing around Hellfire. Okay. Whoa. Thais didn't use the... That I didn't bomb. see coming. That I didn't see coming. That that Drake play instead of the Giant play. I did not see that coming in, in a thousand years. I guess it's all about the Shadow Flame, forcing the opponent to overextend, trade the Senjin into the mm -hmm. Drake, and then yeah, you get that's a good cool. flame. That's cool. Well, that's some foresight here. Thais is showing... Uh, uh, Will he do it, though? Doing? I it think feels... so. He nodded his head. I think he's pretty confident that's the play. Turn Epic. 6. What's turn 6 for Druid? Force of Nature phase. Yeah, Force of Nature phase for value. Or you play Sylvanas, but there's no point. Shredders are possible. You get everything from Sludge Belchers to Druid of the Claw, but Should those aren't really a problem. First? Nah, you don't even tap. That way you can play Giant with Coin, uh, with Dark Bomb, I'm sorry, and keep your, uh, your coin available. And now we have the option to drop the Belcher to, to you know, uh, challenge the Panther Shredder. Which is the best answer possible, I think. He's got just... multiple lines oh, of play. Wow. Okay. Giant so Dark has... Bomb mm -hmm. is not bad, but... Two Giants? Uh, well, if he wants to play Giants, it's the same with Twilight Dragon and F-Shock, right? But there's only one Beacon Hunter, so... Definitely yeah. you want to drop it as soon as possible. Yeah, you've got a second one, and you've got a rag on the back of this, so... Oh, wow! Oh, nice wow. hit! Should have not ended the turn, maybe he would have coined out that coil. Yeah, definitely. That that was a mistake. Well, I think so. Well, maybe not. Through. Maybe not. Yeah. Still, I mean, he did get a really good minion to come out of that. Pretty good pickup for Thais here. But look at Show's hand. It's so looking pretty do? powerful. He's got two swipes. So do you play Ragnaros? Kill the five-five. Go for Ragnaros. Uh, that's a 1-1 one, one lead. Let's stay on the board. It's not that big of a deal. I feel like Coil Belcher or Coil Hill Bot are probably a bit more. Oh, or I'm even just a second giant, honestly. Like, it's. You kill that 5-5, five, five, you play the second giant. Yeah, and let that, that's the this. best. But then, double swipe. Nah, never mind. Double swipe is fine, right? I mean, if you find. If Show finds Savage Roar, he might just go full face, depending on how he reads this. 
D uh, having double swipe in your hand kind of change your approach to the game because you know yeah okay, i can finish you off with almost a double kill command yeah that's the point of a swipe is good for removal but sometimes against stuff like especially hand locks i think more so hand locks than any other matchup you tend to use it either on giants when you're desperate um or you get it for a kill at the very end of the game mm -hmm. oh hellfire oh, that double hellfire. never mind what about hellfire into Ancient Healbot or Belcher? Nah, that doesn't make any sense. Well, the struggle is real. You can, you can Hellfire next turn. So. Yeah. Fan of Argus is a good play. If Black Knight's not in the show's lineup yeah, and you don't I'm expect saying, it to be. He, he doesn't. He's not intimidated by the threat of Black Knight looming over the giant. Savage Roar! Oh man, that swipe is gonna be useless. I feel like you have to drop scenarios defensively here, as bad as it sounds. What about that you got? Keeper oh, to get one one taunt out of the way. No, you can't no, do no, that. You're you about to die. Dead. Dead. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, this is a rest in pepperoni situation. Yeah, this is D A A D. Whoa. Yeah, GG. Hellfire, I think, seals the game, doesn't it? Six, fifteen. 22, 24. No, wait. You 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 lose two points of damage with uh, killing the defender of August, so you're not. Oh right, evil. never mind. Right, you're so short though. All right, so that's gonna not gonna be game this turn, but it's gonna be close enough. At least he can no, wipe the board fully, point. including the shade. You have to use one hellfire. Yeah, I think that's not really. Hellfire you know, into anti kill bot. Very oh, safe Archer. play. Very safe play. I like the Belcher a bit more. Most of the time. You've seen one swipe, so you're not gonna get punched in the face from the back lines. Okay, and you should kill the Snyders, right? Does it really change anything if he's Well got you got six points of damage in your hand. Yeah. So most likely Yeah, just go face and you play Healbot or Belcher, pick your pick your poison. The Druid's gonna be dying to Hellfire Dark Bomb next turn pretty much systematically. Oh. Yeah, I just want to count the damage that he will have next and now. It... <laughs> with a slime, it's actually lethal with Hellfire Dark Bomb, funny enough. The slime That's might the... be the lethal here. Yeah, but yeah, killing not killing the scenarios was a good thing because it doesn't really change anything with your Savage Roar. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. gonna still have to go through so many taunts. Unless there would be a force of nature, Savage Roar, innovate Savage Roar. Yeah, that would be then, a bit of a different story because your minions are... Getting yeah, overwhelmed, and scenarios becomes nine, and he kills it with his face. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm Would you? He... But that's no, that's never mind. That's really a rare situation. It's a rare occurrence. You can't play around it, really. I mean, if you do, then you know, good on you. But I mean, I like the Wrath Keeper, the Grove Swipe here. It really resets the board in a super good way for the Druid. But he's still dead to Dark Bomb and Hellfire, unfortunately. It's a great line of play, but I don't think it'll be enough. It won't be enough. Oh, look, second Savador. And he didn't play a single um a single innovate in this game. But he's still dead. Well, the slime would have helped get the seven damage out of the way, but With based five, on what I can see yeah. here. This is GG. GG, so Tyus wins against Druid. That's yep, interesting. With his warlock. So maybe that's why he's been sticking to his entire warlock. Maybe he feels confident his warlock can take the uh the last deck. Maybe his entire lineup can be Druid. Maybe that's the case. Maybe it just... He planned on show. Warrior against Druid. Hey, dude. Don't, don't, don't question... Don't question Thais. <laughs> I've got no idea why his lineup is built the way that it is, but... He's been sticking to Warlock since the beginning of the entire series. So, either his Hunter is weak against Druid, or... I mean, he wanted the tiebreaker at the very least, so he, if he started with Warlock, it's his best matchup. So, what is his Hunter? It can't be... I think it, it has to be face hunter. Yeah, you say Thais plays a lot of it, so that would seem to make sense. It's in line with what we've seen him play in the past. Mm -hmm. Definitely in line with that. Uh, well, okay, so Thais picked warrior. That's interesting. He knows that usually the warrior has a really hard, a hard time against uh, against Droid. Interesting. And he deliberately yeah. picks Warrior against Droid instead of Hunter. So he thinks Hunter has slimmer chances 
to win against Druid than the Warrior. That's really interesting. I wonder what I mean. Face Hunter seems to be a pretty solid matchup. I guess Sludge Belchers and Druid of the Claw are a problem in general, but I haven't seen Sludges really um, in the Druid deck. So, so I don't know what Dice is putting show on. But Ooh, interesting. Well, I'm curious. Sorry. Rip headphones. Headphones. Headphone users. Yeah, I died. Yeah. I'm dead. Hmm. Dice will play Warrior. All right, so let's see what this Warrior deck contains. I hope uh, we're going to get uh, surprised a little bit here because going with Warrior against the Druid takes some serious Space balls. Warriors. Yeah. Oh, disappointing. It's not the double Arcanite Reaper Warrior. That was a wild draw for sure, so I assume he would be mulliganing every single card. He has Just to get to the fetch wild, wild growth, growth. right? Yeah, yeah. He, has, he has to do it. He has to heart mulligan. What if Druid cut Wild Growth and played something else instead? No way. Mechworkers. I'm curious sometimes what that would change. So he didn't get the Wild Growth, but he has the Shade. He kept the yeah, Shade, Yeah, Shade's right? an amazing... Yeah, it's an amazing minion against Warrior. Um, just because mm -hmm. whenever it has time to grow, the only way for the Warrior to really stop it is to get himself a good Sylvanas. Otherwise, you can literally let it sit there until you force a Brawl, and then you unstealth it right away. Armor up, armor up, armor up. I'll be armoring up for quite a while here, I suspect. The big game hunter is useless against Druid. That yeah, was the worst draw dead. you could have drawn. Yeah. It's a minion, I guess, but not an amazing one. So what do you do? Drop the big game hunter? I think so, right? Yeah. Kinda sucks because then, uh, otherwise, Druid wouldn't have a play on turn three. But you can assume that when he played the Shadow of Nax on turn two, he has the second one on turn three. Yeah, that's interesting. But I would yeah. have kept the coin. I feel like yeah, I feel like this this makes it so his transition is going to be a bit awkward, but it's going to be fine no matter what I think at this point. Bomb I mean, he's got he's got a pretty good. Uh, he's gonna be able to transition to the mid game. Like bomb lobber is gonna be amazing with, with that shade. Like you mm -hmm, play death spite, mm -hmm. that way you can target the bomb lobber. You, you know exactly where you want it to go. That's a huge draw. That weapon allowing him to keep the board yeah, exactly the way insane. he wants it. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, that's insane because Stroke will not attack with that four four. Well, that will be part of Stroke, so it still will be fifty fifty to kill the um, the shade. You know. Yeah. So what about? First dropping the bomb lobber. Yeah. Yeah, and then trying to see what's gonna happen with it. Man, you mm -hmm, really want mm -hmm. that shade to hit. Like this is gonna be the most imp if that shade oh, needs man. to drop right and now. Oh. oh god, that's so the worst. Close. That's so not close. what Thias wanted to see, but you know what? At least he's got a three three on the board. Uh he you can see it in his face. He's like, Well, that could have gone differently. So many fifty fifties in Hearthstone sometimes. So now a lot of them. Four six Druid of the Claw. Yeah. Or charge. No, that doesn't make sense. Oh, he kills it. That's interesting. Why would he do that? To just bait out the execute on turn six? Does it make any sense? Yeah, I guess. He could. Well, that's a pretty nice line of play. It's just that he doesn't want to play into Brawl, I guess. But then again, there's no Brawl value here for the Warrior. Like, that's a bit of a, a weird play, but... What could he have been playing against? Some Sylvanas come out? Like, you drop Sylvanas, and then he's like, Well, my Shade is forfeit. So he's trying to unstealth it before Sylvanas comes down. It wouldn't be forfeit. You have the Keeper. Yeah, you would have been able to silence it. I I'm trying to figure out what show uh, line of thinking is. Maybe because he's curving so well into the late game. He doesn't really mind this much. Hmm. Warrior finds a decent hand so far. A Plus lot of armor up. needed. Yeah. Whoa, no. that's a lot of armor, but that doesn't really help this situation. Um, fiery war axe attack, and then shield. Well, you saw with shield block, maybe or. So shield block, slam into piloted shredder and. Uh, Hope for Doomsayer and play 
Oh, you up. know what? That would be disgusting. If he gets a Doomsayer, the game is just going to be flipped upside down. That's going to be a temple loss. For sure, a huge temple loss. I mean, he's not going to keep with the grow of his own Doomsayer. There's no way. Well, Shields Maiden with Shield Block is also good. Yeah, with Shield Slam, it's pretty solid. Uh, Removes uh, Minion from the board, albeit you're kind of overkilling it. It's still doing what it has to. It's all out of the combo. Well, the combo's been found, and Shield's going to be packing some aggression up on Thice here. No reason to stop applying pressure at this point. So now Thice has to play the second. She's Maiden. Mm -hmm. Or use the, the Grom. Wait. The Grom Ash Sorry, doesn't feel too play. bad. It doesn't feel that bad. Grom kills the Pilot Shredder. I mean, how? Yeah. Oh, man. I guess you could play just Fiery War Axe and Shield Maiden. That's also pretty good. Yeah, I don't even mind fine. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see what comes out of that. Yeah, it's better. First. It's better. That's way better. Never mind me. It's a bad bomber. The bad bomber doesn't do anything. Let's say two thirds of a flame imp and uh, one third of an elf, elf and archer. If you yeah, saw the, the first is... match. Yeah. <laughs> Between the best players in the league. Oh, so Keeper of the Grove comes down. He's like he's setting up combo. He's telegraphing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's screaming to his opponent. So Thais will be Oh belt. Oh That is a draw. That is that, a draw. Why? Wait, 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 wait. Woodwind, Woodwind the Keeper? Nah, never mind. Nah, this is fine. This is so fine. Oh, goodness. Thais has got to be pretty feeling pretty happy about that. He's get himself a Sludge Belcher with the ability to stop the Keeper of the Grove and can finish it off with Whirlwind on the following turn. Ah. Oh, come on. Now the what second Sabadro will be just... No, no, what a whiff. What the whiff? What are you saying? That's a pretty it's big okay. whiff. Un unless you find a... Second reward, this is a pretty big whiff. And you've got what? That's, that's how Harson works, you know? Sure. Right, you're right. How did I forget that? So, Whirlwind, kill the Keeper, Dr. Boom? I like the Dr. Boom here, it's pretty solid. You've even got yourself uh, the ability to sh Shield Slam on the back end. So you attack Sylvanas, maybe a Shield Slam on her so she gets the Slime, then you play Boom. You're so dead though, if that happens. This is pretty dangerous, honestly. What about Shield Slam Keeper, deal three damage and, to the face, uh, Doctor Boom, just Doctor Boom, and now yeah. up. Yeah, I think that's gonna be the the winning play, because then you can uh, you kind of want to get Death Bite out of the way though, so you can play Grom, but you can't do that this turn. Yeah, I, I think that's way better. Well, the whirlwinds could be used. Oh, he didn't use the. Extra. He didn't yeah. use the shield slam. That's interesting because he, you gave him four points of damage for free with the whole combo. And I assume now it was the turn when you combo. Because you have Savage Roar is basically saying, okay, I got Pyroblast for free mana. You have five, five targets for the Savage Roar. If he finds there. a swipe here. Nope, no, no swipe, but a pretty well, good draw Keeper nonetheless. Well, also good. Yeah, pretty solid, I'd say, even. So what's uh, the next turn? Oh, combo. I mean, for the, the warrior, you mean? Yeah, for the warrior. How many points of damage is it? It's 10, 12? That's not enough. No, the current position, man, he's getting those armor up top decks non-stop. He is nailing that, it. That's a really a hard. So wait, hard you've turn. got you use your boom bot. So you wait, attack wait, the Drake wait, with your three. Wait, what about first? First the Belcher into the Keeper. No, in the Drake, but that's fine as well, I guess. Because it could live. I guess you might want to keep it. I just feel like you want to sacrifice it. Hmm. Okay. So you want to clear the whole board. And play the Shield Slam, most likely. Yeah. You probably are gonna have the Shield Slam, perhaps your own Dr. Boom, even. But... Yeah, yeah. I agree. Well, let's see what he gets. And... He gets Dr. Boom, so Whirlwind has got to be tempting. But Death's Bite is more consistent by a long shot. The good thing with this play is that he lives through combo unless there was a double combo played with the double Savage Roar. I mean, he's more than safe in this position. And he can't possibly feel too bad about this. Why didn't you shield block first? 
I don't know, maybe the entire turn wasn't mapped out. So he's on 23 health right now, he's safe against uh, combo with Savage Roar, so he's safe for probably the rest of the game unless um, Thais finds another way to charge and deal damage in the immediate, uh, immediately. Well, you killed the next uh, next creeper. I mean, <laughs> uh, the next engine, next minion. Yeah, it, it that, dies uh, to the, uh, the table, so it dies to the death spine. So that's really good. Then you drop the Harrison Jones, and you will draw into Belcher. No, Armor Swift. Uh, that's even better. Now we In this both. case, it is. Oh man. Okay, wait. If he attacks this, he's down to. Why won't you attack? 20 more? health, and now 22. Actually, if he doesn't whirlwind now and show finds the second roar, this is gonna be game. This I would is gonna like be game. To see... Uh, the oh my whirlwind. god! No, no, I mean the the death spite attack after you play both minions. You know. All right, so he doesn't find the sludge belcher. Yeah, I know. I agree with you. What I would have thought he would do is try to get that bit of extra armor to play around the double savage or combo. But no, no, it's not even about it. the double savage or combo because you saw two refs and you saw one swipe. So what does the druid have to battle those wounded minions? Nothing, yeah, nothing really. Yeah, send Jin maybe to tank a single hit from Harrison, but I mean, ultimately you're trying to get that armor for a very well, specific purpose. You got right? the read that Sho has the combo in hand because on turn nine he did only play the send that he top decked, right? So you, yeah. you got the read. You got the read for that. So now we will drop. Oh wow! You know what's interesting is I feel like. The Druid versus Warrior matchup is much less lopsided than I thought initially. Because I remember a while back it was the case that Druid systematically won against Warrior. But it seems like as Warriors learn to play the matchup, they get less and less, oh my goodness. I wouldn't agree with you, <laughs> but that's my, uh, but that's my opinion. What do you mean? I still think Warrior Rex Druid. It's just that um, Thais has the, a the really great. Okay. Thais has uh, has a really a really great uh, draw. I feel like Druids are very often pushed into playing into overextending very fast, and Warriors have the tools to slow them down a little bit, especially when they're reverting to the double shield block, double shield maiden play. Right? Like Thais has played two blocks, two shield maidens so far. Mhm. Mm uh, mhm. Mm so he's been yeah. able to keep himself out of that. So dangerous 20, 20 points of life man yeah so you drop the gromash and whirlwind and go face your 21 health i think you do yeah you get a 10 damage into the face card draw won't help you any more than it will um and, i mean Sho has to get bgh off the top she wants to remove that grom mm -hmm. well he can ties can, can um might be thinking that ties is keeping that big game hunter BGH. instead of that inver innervate you know but I, I think that's still the best play you, you can do here because the other option is the Acolyte of Pain and Wuru and Death and then you lose the uh, Activator for your Grom and you have to count on drawing one of the Taskmasters. Oh, oh he man. finds a scenario so much for uh, putting your face in your hands here. That is a great draw. Two hits from that Grom will be tanked by Scenarius, and there's a possibility that there is oh, no other way. Oh, that's a cruel Taskmaster. Well, you can still draw. So you drop the Acolyte of Pain and Taskmaster into a... Um, I don't know what, what can happen. Cleave until you kill both and then you hit face. <laughs> Belch? Oh, that's a perfect draw. No way. That is crazy. Like, perfect mana saturation at the end of the game here. And, uh, well... Savage Roar. Okay, so you can... You have to drop Ancient of Law. Well, Savage Roar allows you to kill Grom at the very least, right? Doesn't it? Oh, no, because you're, uh... Yeah, you have to use your. Oh, oh man, this is oh, a crazy pad. I was, I was counting it and it I doesn't. didn't see it. Yeah, you're one. You're one off of killing that Belcher effectively. So you need the big game hunter. Oh, double innervate. That's the whip. That's the. Yeah. That's the game. Wow. Yeah, the two uh, innervates were as complete I said, in this game. As I said, Druid is always winning against the warrior. So you know, you just saw that. It turned out. Yeah, it turned out to be the exact opposite because we call it right. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah. that's the way things go in this tournament. I don't remember ever getting you a good prediction. Leave. Yeah. Well, Sho's gonna be going down to this warrior deck. Uh, Fibonacci was right. I'm a warrior and I farm druids all day, every day. And that's is gonna Sho be. Uh, so emotional? Like, you know, he's. He uh... is very often, yeah. I mean, sometimes he keeps his cool, but as I said, he's been having a rough run in the tournament, so I wouldn't doubt that this whole thing has been taking its toll on his ability to focus super heavily. Hmm.
or at least you know stay positive it's hard to stay positive when things just go wrong non-stop um, when you expect them to go at least partially in your way so that's gonna be that's gonna bring thighs down to his last deck hunter hunter versus druid you say it's face hunter and i trust you um i would I say so yeah it's not a bad matchup for the hunter either you can put a lot of pressure druid needs to find very specific cards early to stop the aggression and counter pressure and i haven't seen any sludge belchers in show's deck so did we did we see any uh, we I saw, saw Senjin. Senjin and one Belcher. Okay. Uh, I so he's got what it takes, maybe, to help against Face Hunter. I mean, Face Hunter is everywhere in the meta. It's probably one of the strong de strongest decks right now in GVG. And uh, it it's funny how you think you've defeated Hunters by nerfing them, and it just comes back. <laughs> and it always comes back with something else. Now Face Hunter's at the top. You know what I was there for a while, but Face is just so strong right now. You know what I miss? The first Unleash the Hounds. With plus one attack to beasts? You play yeah. Young Dragon, Hawk, Timberwolf, 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 yeah. I really miss that, uh, that kind of deck. I totally don't, man. I swear to God, that was giving me <laughs> ulcers. Because the only way they could actually win uh, was by, you know, dropping Buzzard and then playing all the one-drop beasts, which flooded their hand, and then they unleashed for plus one attack and charged your face. It was, it was so insane, though. It was so crazy. People were the wild you know, complaining growth. about OTK. There was a wild growth for there was double wild, wild growth and keeper. Uh, well, the first one is good. The second one, I'm not too sure he'll have time to play it against the face hunter, but we'll have to see. He plays double Sanjin and I assume double, um, double uh, Belcher. Uh, yeah, Belcher. And I know, I, I know he's playing do double Joe to the claw. That's pretty obvious. What I'm curious about is. Animal I was companion here or abuse of sergeant? Animal companion. Oh no. Uh, well, I like Hopper creeper and uh, yeah. Hopper I like creeper, so much. but I'm biased. If Huffer comes out, I mean, Show's gonna be smiling. Eh, but that's it is bad. Not... Misha would be much better, but but um, um, there's a Belcher. Yeah, you want to talk about a good curve? Show got his, you know, he gets a keeper that gets a kill on a minion, and he gets to belch right afterwards. And I haven't seen a single Iron B Cal yet, so. I would rather see. Abusive here. I like abusive with creeper. Yeah. But what I wanted to say is uh, the, the last turn, I would rather see Hunted Creeper and Abusive Sergeant. I agree. That's what I would have probably played for safety purposes. But I mean, he feels confident that he he's statistically, statistically likely to get what he wants. Mm -hmm. And based on what I'm looking at right now, I feel like uh, Vice made the right calls. He's in a pretty good position, and so, Show needs to find a swipe desperately. Um, shade in the hero power abusive sergeant. Oh, Drake. Okay, that doesn't really help at all. So how do how does ties deal with that? Second weapon, that's nice. So if you play Animal Companion and get Hoffer, you trade it into the Drake, The right? Drake, yeah. And then you go phase for seven. Or you just go phase with everything. What if you but... glaive Zuka and hit the Abusive into the Drake? Because oh, you RNG be lottery. Sweet. That would yeah. be sweet. Well, you can always do it with your face. You don't really care. And you can also squeeze your, your hero powers. I feel glaive Zuka is, as you said, the, the, the most logical option here. Because with Animal hero Companion... Power. With Animal Companion, you, you, you lose one point of mana, and that's basically like two points of damage, I think, because then you curve it out badly on next turn. Misha, that's nothing you wanted to say. That's 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 the worst drop you could have dropped. You could have got it from the Companion right now. Yeah, I mean, it's not really relevant at the moment because you're playing it to swipe super heavily. So if a swipe is found off the top, oh, oh my no way! God. Show finds the swipe, gets the insta play, kills everything, and Thais is back to square one with no minions to play and only weapons. Gonna have to deal with Sludge Belcher and a crazy follow up from Show. Oh, that swipe was so important for Show. Oh man. Such an important nice. draw here. That's why I didn't like the Animal Companion. I would rather see with the Glaive Zuka, especially when you have two weapons in your hand. I agree, it's playing too heavily into swipe, but this is just devastating here for Thais. He, he doesn't lose the game yet, and you know, we'd be very, uh, we'd be wrong to call the, the game that early, but that, that Wrath as well. Card draw into Sludge Belcher, now Thais is gonna have to find some sick top decks. A quick shot would be useful, wouldn't it? <laughs> quick shot would be nice. 
<laughs> yeah, three damage on that bell, sure, draw a card. After you've dumped Heck, everything you've got. that's okay. That's not a bad card. You can find yourself a good uh, Iron Beak Owl, Hoot Hoot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or, uh, or uh, you know, Scumbag Wolf Rider. Does it help here? I don't think so. No. Uh, well, well, it does, because you can kill the Belcher, but you're wasting your Glaive Zooka, your Wolf Rider, and that's it. Well, you have to do it anyway. Yeah. Oh, it sucks. I think he's waiting on the Owl to do it. No, nah, he's not. No, he's not. Hoot Hoot is not going to come to the rescue. He has to play Unleash the Hounds next turn, so he won't have mana to do every single, uh, every single, every single thing. Yeah. Oh, that's that's game. Yeah, this is gonna be another line of taunt for Thais to deal with, and unless he finds a Hunter's Mark here, this is gonna be a really problematic situation. And even if he does find it, it would still be the best top deck, mind you. But yeah. oh man, that is not it. So you wait to hope for even more Unleash value. You can still get that. You can play the bow for the sake of getting it. But what are you going to top deck that could be weaved in with it? I don't see how Tice will turn this around. There's no way. There's no way. Whoa, all right. Savage Roar lethal, right? Four, uh, six, no, it's five, not quite seven, lethal. eight, plus eight, that's 16. Okay, never mind. Yeah, quite close, mind you, but not quite there yet. So you just yeah, low tip and shred. <laughs> All right, so you've got a you've got a hand with minions, and, and you've got a savage or lying around. Just go for it. If he's got unleashed, and so be it. It's gonna cost him eight mana, and that's gonna cause you zero trouble. So that's good. Ice's hunter is gonna go down. So you know what, dude? We actually called all the um, the wrong decks that he should have played first. He went for Warlock first. Everything that he picked made sense. He knew that his, or at least he thought that his face hunter was a weak link against Druid. And it was, you know, I think he's right based on what we just saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the decks, the decks were right, but I still kind of disagree about the plays that he made. Perhaps. You know, the, well, you can the get second a Hellfire them. and the Animal Companion, I didn't like it at all. Well, it's gonna be game and match for show here. I think that swipe was the game-winning top deck. Oh yeah, that definitely. Swipe was the only way show came back into this game. So Thais this close to getting the match, but show is gonna be taking it, which means uh, both players are gonna be moving on to uh, their fifth match. That's their fifth match completed. Show is now three-two to Thais is two-three in the entire Kingwin Pro League event. I mean, though, show's gotta be feeling pretty okay now that he broke his lost loss streak. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. But and Thais again. Thais again is uh, at a minus point. So two mm -hmm. wins, three losses. And uh, he's basically in the middle section of the group right now. We'll have to see how it goes uh, further. Uh, but uh, we'll be jumping next. What's the next game? After the break, of course. There's a Savage versus Sixo. Sixo, yes. He's gonna be Savage versus Sixo. Both players are having a pretty tough time. They're both at the same score, one to three so far in the event. So they both really want that win. It's gonna be important for them to equalize because after all, we're almost at the halfway point of the entire Kingwin Pro League, which means the matches that are going onwards are gonna be the determining ones as far as whether or not you make the cut to the playoffs or just to be reinvited to season two. So uh, we'll be going for a short 10 minute break, guys. We'll be right back with Savage versus XL, Kingwin Pro League 2015.